Okay, perfect. Well, then let's get started. Uh, welcome to the virtual open day. Um, I think we waited long enough to see if we have started or not. <laughs> so we will just get started. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, as you know, as as we're going along through the virtual open day, uh, if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to put them uh, in the comment section. And also, if you're not on our mailing list, meaning if you didn't get any email uh, regarding this virtual open day, please feel free to, to share your email with us so you can get this uh, presentation uh, afterwards. It'll be nicely packaged and it'll have links to even more details with the topics that we are explaining. So getting into that, the agenda, we will first hear from our uh, lovely SEO, Svetlana, and then we'll get into the programs in campus here that we have at Barcelona. And then we'll talk about the student life and we'll have two guest speakers, a teacher and a student, Maria Naza. So thank you so much for joining us today. And then we'll talk about our study abroad options at MIPT and Bangkok. And then we'll get into our scholarships and we'll have a Q&A session. So Svetlana, I will have uh, the floor shared with you. Hi, everybody. Um, if you're listening to us, thank you for joining us for the open day on uh, the University of the Future. And I think it's uh, interesting to talk about uh, why we call our university University of the Future and what is it that we're teaching, how we're doing this, and why it is important for your future. Um, so first of all, Harbor Space specializes in um, three major things. Uh, so we teach um, design, entrepreneurship, and technology. And uh, uh, the last one, the technology part, I would like to explain in detail because Harbor Space is uh, unusual uh, in terms of um, how um, our system uh, of these three different topics comes together. It comes together in the context of an early stage digital venture. Now, let's speak about it in detail. Uh, if we look at today's society, uh, and if we look at any sector of our society, if we look at anything that we produce as humans, um, then the lowest uh, value add uh, is at the you know, bottom of what we call the value creation pyramid. And it's all the things that in our society we do manually, right? So if you do only the manual work, the output uh, is uh, defined by how much of that labor work you can do. And then the society advances and we come up with something that we call mechanical, right? So imagine we invent a, a wheel as a humanity so we can produce more, the output can be greater. So the value pyramid is advancing. And in our day and age, the highest end of the value creation pyramid is in software and algorithmic content. We believe at Harbor Space that the software and algorithmic content are uh, sort of the latest uh, uh, breakthrough in the evolution of humanity. And so we double down on that. So we are first and foremost um, an engineering school at its core. So here we uh, focus on everything that has to do with digital. And what has to do with digital has to do with building software. What has to do with digital has things to do with how the data is organized. That's why we call it algorithmic content. So users generate content. We as humans generate a ton of content every day and it's recorded and it's organized and it's out there somewhere and we are here to get it and to make sense out of it. And some companies, the biggest, most valuable companies on the planet are built on algorithmic content as one example. Uh, that everybody knows for sure is uh, the highest valued transportation company in the world is Uber. It doesn't even have a mechanical part, right? It only, what it does, it really organizes uh, drivers uh, and the information about uh, the passengers in such a way through the algorithm that it, 
it's valued at uh, you know almost 60 or something billion dollars and it's uh, uh valued at uh, uh you know more than cumulatively ford and uh, i think general motors combined uh so harbor space teaches you uh here everything that has to do with creating from scratch very often a digital venture so uh that's why I said from scratch, because in the beginning, I told you that everything you're going to learn in here has to do with digital and it has to do with an early stage. How do you start from zero, uh, a digital company, a company that when we say digital, that uses as the main distribution channel, internet, and as the main uh, um, um, medium to reach people, mobile. So then we can move to another slide. I hope I made sense. Um, also, uh, what we are very, very proud of is because the topic is extremely complex, right? As you can guess, I mean, building software, building businesses on the internet is, uh, you know, it sounds really fancy, uh, but it is very complex and not everybody succeeds. And therefore we really need people here at the uni who are, what we call them trailblazers. So people who go first, the pioneers, um, and, and, you know, and show the way. They leave uh, a trail after, after that. So we are a perfect home for change makers, uh, meaning that we look yeah, for... Yeah. Uh, guys, can you close the door, please? Thanks. Thank you, guys. Uh, so we look uh, for uh, people that are curious and interested to build um, uh, to build a, a legacy in the um, in in the sphere of software engineering in the in the sphere of digital businesses, and uh, as they're very complex, uh, you know we need you to go full in. So basically, if you join Harbor Space, you need to be ready uh, to become a change maker to lead the way. Very often, you will be maybe the first one to come up with a solution because you know things are still unknown in the internet and uh, you know new business models come up every single day uh, the competition is crazy in the internet as well um, but you know we're here to uh, to teach you uh, about all the pitfalls and about everything that uh, others found very very successful on the internet so what we can guarantee is that you're going to be told by the world-class teachers, coaches, and mentors uh, that come directly from this industry and that bring you the latest in that field. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we do not teach things in isolation. So we don't believe in one trick ponies. So only if you know how to build software or only if you're a great designer or only if you're a great business person, but you don't know how to augment your idea by technology. We, we really believe in the combination of the three. So everyone who joins Harbor Space is guaranteed to be exposed to uh, all three things, technology, business, and design. And uh, uh, you know, we, we, I'm sure that the guys will walk you through uh, the schedule during the year, but I can tell you that the very, very first course here at Harbor Space that everyone must join and uh, it's a mandatory course. It's called Zero to Hero. And, and in this course, in the three weeks, no matter whether you join us as a designer, as a software developer, or as a digital marketer, or as a cybersecurity expert, you will be exposed to all what it takes to build a digital venture from scratch. In three weeks, you're gonna learn all the journey and then it's up to you if you want to continue taking classes outside of your major, which we definitely uh, make sure you do. Adriano is the man uh, behind helping you to build a personal schedule uh, that allows you to learn uh, all of those things in addition, uh, usually in addition to what you're learning anyways. Uh, another thing I want to mention is Hubspace is a new university. However, we uh, very much respect the, uh, you know, the, the traditional way of, uh, of, of teaching as well. So we do not ignore the fundamentals. In fact, if anything, Harbor Space guarantees you 
a fundamental knowledge in addition to the practical knowledge that you get. So here at Harper Space, uh, uh, it's not a shortcut. Uh, you know, it's, it's because we want to teach you the principles that have always worked, the universal principles that are proved to work, um, no matter how things are going to change. And things will change, of course, and especially in technology, things are changing all the time. But it doesn't mean that the laws of physics, uh, you know, do not apply to it. They, they, they definitely do. So the next slide, please. So we believe in very simple recipe uh, uh, for success, for your success with us uh, here at Harbor Space. And, uh, you know, it is about having first of these four things that are mentioned on the website. The very first one at the top of it is called the best students. It's the key principle here at Harbor Space. So we, we, we go many, many, many extra miles to find you guys, to make sure that you are the most promising change makers in your field, the most promising people in the world, that, um, uh, and also the kind of people that we can make a difference to. So at Harbor Space, be sure that you're gonna be learning maybe half of what you're gonna be learning is from your peers because your peers are brilliant people. And uh, this is our main and key principle. Everything Harbor Space does um, is aimed at bringing as many as good uh, students as we can find from around the world. We have scouts around the world that uh, actually find you. Sometimes, you know, people get an invitation to study at Harbor Space because they've uh, shown uh, that they're, they are in a possession of a certain superpower uh, that we find very valuable for the rest of the students or uh, in general for uh, early stage digital ventures. The second part is best content, you know. Uh, of course, in general, we focus on something that is relevant. When I say the best content for me, it's like something that is very relevant uh, in, in general for you, for your life, so it's a content that has a very long shelf life. On the other hand, it's a relevant content for your today's position, where you are today, the kind of career you want to do. Uh, then it's the best faculty. Of course, thanks to having the best students, we have the privilege and you know, we dare to have the best faculty because our faculty is very, very special, very a small, or if I would say non-existent fraction of our faculty comes here to teach because of the money they get. A lot of people that you're gonna meet come here and dedicate their time. Their biggest commitment is the time that they spend with you are here because uh, we gave them one simple promise that they're gonna be teaching the most motivated uh, people of our generation. And we truly keep that promise. And of course, as a result, I think that, uh, you know, the last uh, principle, which is the best companies that work with us, it really is a consequence of the first three. You know, when you have the best students, you have the best faculty, you have the best content. I mean, eventually uh, you are uh, the best people uh, on the market when you come out, even though you know, when you're in a class and you uh, start practicing what is digital entrepreneurship or what is it uh, to build a software, you're not as good as your teachers because, you know, your teachers come with 15, 20 years of experience. But if you compare yourself when you come out to the job market with your peers, I mean, you will uh, ace it. Uh, on interviews uh, because you're just going to be well, well, you know, super well trained. And in terms of, I didn't, I mean, probably I should change my slide or this slide to uh, to 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 make you even. Uh, no, no, no. Can we go back uh, for a second? I, I was I was I was thinking that uh, now that I'm talking about this slide, that there's one thing that is not mentioned on the slide, but I think it is an interesting thing to mention. It's very important. Is a scalar which augments everything here on this slide. It's the volume of knowledge you receive. Um, I will not go into details, but just take my word that in Harbor Space, you will uh, get three times as much volume in terms of contact hours with your professor than in any other university in Europe right now. So you spend three times more time with the you know, you know, source of knowledge, which is a, you know, usually a faculty member that we bring. And it's uh, especially relevant and valuable because it's usually one person at a time. So during three weeks, you just 
spend time with one professor, which I'm sure the guys will tell you more about our unique system of, of actually pedagogy. Yeah, let's move on. Um, so, you know, I'm just, uh, we'll be repeating myself, but everything you're gonna learn here uh, has to do with uh, technology. Of course, you learn along the way things like ethics, uh, things like, uh, uh, you know, mindfulness and how to live a happy life. I mean, that for sure as well is a part of the offer. Uh, but what really makes it special and really something you should think about is if you want to be um, in the tech field, then it's the right place for you. So we take you from uh, basically a beginner, if, even if you're a beginner or if you're advanced, so everybody can join at this level to the highest end. But if you join as a beginner, uh, trust uh, trust us that you're going to be taken to the highest end of the tech field, which includes also uh, courses on artificial intelligence, on data structures and algorithms, and uh, of course, algorithmic content and how AI, for example, from next year, we're teaching AI for designers, you know, which wasn't taught before, but as it is coming to the market, we are uh, going to uh, expose our students to this as well. The other thing, be sure you're going to have at Harvard Space and here a lot is competitive programming. Competitive programming is uh, actually a classical programming with uh, two differences, uh, which are you have to uh, build your program under a constraint of time and efficiency, a certain minimum level of efficiency. Uh, which is a very interesting field. It's, uh, you know, we are competing with uh, the best universities in the world uh, in terms of educating this kind of talent that is extremely efficient uh, in terms of how they build the programs. Uh, then, as I said, interaction design, which is uh, translating technology into digital experiences that um, humans enjoy. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, uh, internet is, uh, is something that we consider as the main distribution channel. So when we will be teaching you to do business, we are not teaching you to do a normal business, like opening a store and waiting that somebody passes by and comes into your store. No, your store is the world, right? It's the uh, internet users that are going to come to your digital front. And uh, most of these users nowadays will probably see you for the first time through a mobile interface, through their smartphone. Uh, I don't know if I have more slides. To... Yeah. yeah, I like to say that because I believe that everybody is a, is a creative, everybody is a problem solver and everybody is intrinsically an entrepreneur. Because if you, uh, you know, I like to quote uh, uh, Nolan Bushnell, the co-founder of Atari who said that any one of you who once took a shower definitely had an idea, it's, but it's the one who decides to do something about this idea uh, that really will make a difference. So here at Harvey Space, uh, we believe in uh, people who decide to do something about their ideas and we support them in every way we can. So our motto is idea, prototype, test. So very, very much action driven. So that's it's not really all for me, but you know, I can go on for hours about the unique uh, model and the promise that Harvard Space gives to students, but I will uh, pass it to my colleagues and really thank you all for joining us today. Thank you so much, Svetlana, for that uh, wonderful introduction to Harbor Space. Uh, I want to go into more detail about our programs, which really make Harbor Space uh, quite unique. So Harbor Space provides high, high quality education at foundation, bachelor and master levels. And really what Svetlana got into was uh, the big overall take of design, tech and entrepreneurship, which really surrounds uh, these three pillars. So our 10 programs involve maths as a second language, um, computer science, data science, cybersecurity, interaction design, high tech entrepreneurship, digital marketing, super cities, FinTech, and uh, our newest one, front-end development. And I will say that uh, Mass as a Second Language is our foundational course. And the other programs are tech, are the computer science, data science, cybersecurity, and the new one, front-end development. And uh, all of these kind of encapture the um, both 
uh, bachelor's and master's, but I will say FinTech is just uh, master's only. So kind of getting into where these programs take place is our wonderful campus. Obviously where knowledge uh, flows through, uh, freely and great ideas are born. So Barcelona campus features is amazing because we have the best sea views, as you can see here. Um, <laughs> it's not just a virtual background. And then on our ground floor, we have the space bar where you can go and grab coffee. And unfortunately due to COVID, it has been closed for the past year, but we hope to see that open up very soon. And of course, on our first floor, there's a lot of inviting on spots to grab a meal, take a coffee break, grab a snack. And of course, for students and faculty, they're able to put the, their food in the fridges, uh, able to heat it up right on the spot. So it really is just three floors of excellence uh, from the top to the bottom, uh, very accommodating uh, for whatever you might need. So of course, this all takes place in the wonderful hub of Barcelona, which I'm gonna hand it over to Adriano to talk more about. Thank you, Annie. Um, so as my co-workers stated, we're located in Barcelona, Spain, one of the greatest cultural capitals of the world um, and globally admired. Um, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the city. Um, in general, it has a wonderful weather all year round. Um, a little bit colder in winter, so a little bit more warmer in summers. But normally it, it's around 20 Celsius daily, 68 Fahrenheit for everyone who is visiting us from the States. Um, as you may know or not yet, is the second largest city in Spain. And it's also known as the Silicon Valley of Europe. As our CEO was mentioning before, there's a lot of startups that are actually have started in this city and are still um, starting as we speak. Um, this next, next slide. Um, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the student life in Barcelona. Um, Barcelona is a wonderful, really young city for, for everyone who lives in it. Um, there's a lot of entrepreneurial um, events. There's a lot of, of cultural things you can do as a student here, enjoy the culture, enjoy the gastronomy. It's a city that was founded by the Romans more than 2000 years ago. Um, it's located at the wonderful beaches. You have the mountains on the back. Um, you, can, you can do different type of sports. Uh, the basic and most uh, common one will be like playing football. You can do um, kite surfing. You could do a lot of things um, right here in, in, in this beautiful, amazing city. Um, in the next slide, I'm gonna talk about like the student life at Harbor Space. Um, here we organize events and festivities for all students involved, uh, such as Halloween, Secret Santa or Friendsgiving. We also organize space talks for every student to come and join the amazing and um, professionals and guests that we have on campus. We have daily jam sessions that could participate, you could participate on a daily schedule. We have actually a piano um, on the first floor for every adventure that will, is willing to um, learn from it or actually play for the crowd. Um, and as uh, Svetlana, our CEO said before, we have other type of events as uh, competitive programming as challenges and hackathons that can be involved for every and all disciplines that we have here at, at Harbor Space. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so now I'm going to hand it out to Annie once again, who she's going to talk about the industry leaders teaching here at Harbor Space. Thank you so much, Adriano. Um, yes, and as Svetlana mentioned many times, one of the uh, greatest kind of selling points or most exciting things that Harbor Space has going on is it's taught by industry leaders. Uh, I am a digital marketing alumni, and this was one of the most exciting things that attracted me to it. So of course at Harbor Space, uh, for both campuses, actually we have 80 plus industry leaders teaching every year. So for me, Andy uh, Crescidino was one of my favorite teachers. And uh, he was also named Forbes top 10 online marketing experts to watch. But of course, uh, Irene, for instance, she is our interaction design program leader. She has won awards from Webby, Emmy, and Red Dot. And I believe those who are familiar with competitive programming or any of our technical programs, you would know Mikael, which is the founder of the largest competitive programming platform in Code Forces, who also comes and teaches uh, on this campus as well. So kind of speaking uh, about industry leaders, we have one today, Maria Sol. So happy to have you here today. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for the introduction, Amy. So hello, everyone. So happy to be here at the open day. Uh, first of all, like a, an introduction about me. Uh, I'm Maria Sol Grossi, teaching um, paid and social advertising here at Harvard Space. Um, so first, uh, uh, a bit of my background. I'm an industrial engineer with more than uh, 10 years experience in performance marketing and digital advertising. So I have worked at tech companies like uh, Oracle, Microsoft. I have more than four years working at Facebook. I had also worked at the one of the first um, unicorn companies in Argentina called Despegar.com, uh, which is similar to Booking. And they were like the first company in Latin America to invest in social and, and pay digital advertising. So that's how I started my career in, in, in digital advertising. Um, here in Spain, I have worked in, in Globo, uh, one of also a unicorn company from here, like we. And, and now at the moment, I'm working on Scopely, a gaming company uh, from LA that they do games like you probably know, Scrabble Go, um, Marvel Strike Force, Yahtzee, Wheel of Fortune, so really, uh, really big games. Um, so when I was listening to, to Svetlana uh, before, uh, I think there was something really important. Uh, when I, I remember when I studied engineer, that I was using the same books as my dad and as my grandpa, my granddad used when he studied. So you can see that in terms of physics, chemistry, things don't change that much, right? But uh, but then when I got into the online world in, 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 in marketing, and I will see that things change every month, I realized how I would have loved in university to have classes like more than people that are also experienced than the ones I had, people that are really uh, working in the companies that are taking the lead and in the companies where things are happening. So what I value most about Harvard Space, what we do here is like we take like real examples and we teach the student what is really happening outside. So even if they're gonna build their own company or, or they prefer to work at a, another big company, they know what is happening. It's not only theory, like uh, Svetlana was saying is important, but it's also like actual and real example on what we are seeing outside. And another way I see it, like I was preparing the classes for, uh, for this year and like everyone was telling me, hey, but like, you already prepared some classes for some months ago. Like, why are you preparing it new? And it's like, everything has changed. You know, I have to start from zero now because maybe what I had taught last year is not, it doesn't apply anymore. So we have to keep changing. And what the students learn here, are, it's, it's, it's what it's happening on site. Um, and finally, uh, going back to, to a Svetlana graph about the student faculty, um, I think the important thing that I realized as Harvard Space is like the quality of the students. People come here to learn and they have actual projects that they're working in. So it's really exciting to see that at the end of the class, when you have to do the final presentation, it's just not one more uh, final uh, presentation they have to do for a course. It's part, of their, it's part of their job, it's part of their project. So they're really excited about it and they apply everything they learn into a real project. So I think that's really valuable and, 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 and they end up learning and applying everything they learn and, and really taking advantage of it. So it's a pleasure for me to be teaching at this university and to be learning also for, from, from really quality students that, that we have here. Thank you so much, Maria. That was excellent. Um, lovely to be here with you. And it was so wonderful to take your class last year. And of course, she's teaching right now. So it's just finishing up the, the module. So now we are going to hand it over to Adriano to talk more about our infamous capstone projects. Thank you once again. Um, so as a university, as an institution, we have something called the capstone project that we believe is what we think it devoured to the real world in the, in the face of profession. Um, what we like to say that is at the gateway to meeting other brilliant minds at the same time as working 
together one with the other. Um, we're going to talk about the different type of capstones that we have here in available for other disciplines. Um, we have the startup. Well, the name of the capstone itself, you can imagine what is it all about. It's for all and every student who is willing to be an adventurer and open uh, its own startup company. Then we have the case study capstone, which is an internship, which is a student that will go and give an exchange of experience. We'll learn a lot of, a lot of important insights as working in a company. And then we'll have, which is the portfolio, which is more de um, designed and focused on interactive design students in which they will showcase all the, all the work they have been doing so far at Harvard Space at the end of their studies. Um, we're gonna share with you some examples of portfolio that we have from these two amazing um, alumni. Um, they're super fantastic. At the end of the of the demo of the open day, we can share these presentations and you can take a closer look to which, which these portfolios are actually all about. They're really in depth into detail and they will talk about themselves. Um, right now, also we have these two startups that are actually functioning right, right now, and both of them from alumni at Harvard Space. We have Banky, which is my, my one of my favorites, which is learn about money, 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 which is basically showing young kids nowadays, how to handle their financials, how to learn about using and um, sharing money um, right there in, outside, in the outside world since a younger age. Um, these are really good, amazing startups. So, so moving forward. Um, we're gonna have one of our amazing students right now at Harvard Space give their their, their experience of what does it mean to be an, an amazing student. Nasa? Yes, thank you, Adriano. Um, so I'm Nasa. I'm originally from Argentina, in Buenos Aires specifically. And I started studying here at Harvard Space about two years ago, 2019. Um, it's been a wonderful experience. I study high tech entrepreneurship and digital marketing. And well, now I have the opportunity to work uh, as a youth designer at Revit. As you can see on the screen, it's a brand and a microfinding platform that channels money for everyday purchases to find the innovative ideas of social change of young people. So we only invest in people who are under 25 years old and have incredible ideas to change the world. Uh, we invested in water filtration systems in Syria, in Egypt, uh, mental health projects all around Libya and everywhere in Africa. Uh, it's really about getting uh, the money to the hands of young people who want to change the world around the world, especially in the places where that money never arrives usually. And well, we're taking this to the next step um, and we're doing so by creating a brand component where we work with other brands in order to do brand collaborations and fund some of the revenue of those brand collaborations, products that young people actually use uh, to fund their own work as social change innovators. So it's creating this circle of change um, that where young people fund themselves as youth innovators. And I talk about the company, which is not related to Harbor Space, but everything that is being done there, I've had learned from Harbor Space. And that's what I really wanted to share with that. And this is a project that I've also worked on for quite some time during my time at Harbor Space, my capstone project, uh, super. So uh, we identified a problem and this is exactly how I learned to do it at Harbor Space. I identified the problem of surplus of food waste in supermarkets in Latin America, specifically, in the Amazon rainforest in Brazil, where it's the least efficient out of anywhere in Latin America. And we decided that we'd solve this with some tools. And we did so by deciding, well, the problem with supermarket sur food surplus and food insecurity in the region can be solved through software optimization. Just like Svetlana was saying earlier, uh, algorithmic content, software, those are the two tops of the pyramid that will solve the world's largest problems. And so, Keeping that in mind, we identify the content, in this case, the information that the supermarket outputs, which is their inventory database, could be optimized in order to reduce food waste, and then also funnel some of that um, extra food to solve food insecurity in the regions. Now, this started as an idea from scratch. We didn't have anything, uh, but well, we put together a team, we identified a solution, we started talking to supermarkets, we even pitched to some supermarkets in the region and got to pitch to the CIO of the seventh largest retailer in Brazil. And 
that's that's what you're gonna learn to do here to actually work on the stuff that you want to do and not to just read about it all day uh we're encouraged by our professors to really go out there uh, really do the work outside of university pick up the phone call uh send emails send linkedin invites and really try to get in the front of people who will help you make your project happen. And those people are actually, most of them already at Harvard Space or in the mirror, right? That's what, they, what, what we get taught as well, that it's yourself who pushes this project forward. Um, I had the incredible opportunity to work with incredible teachers uh, like Sol uh, and like Don, who is the director of the High Tech Entrepreneurship Program. And he's been a mentor of mine. And really we have that close-knit connection with our teachers. I mean, when there's a few people in the classroom, you really get that chance to engage with them, talk about them, about work, and they're all very honest and open, right? So you will get, you know that you're getting the real information and not um, just what they could think of for the slide. Uh, really, you're gonna be able to talk about everything, uh, career opportunities, about the industry, about what you can do. So there's not much more to say than you can see already how everything that you learned here will apply to your project and you will live this place with a big portfolio, with a big startup, with something to show that you've done. And that's what's most important about the Capstone project, that you leave this place with something that you can show. Thank you so much, Naza. This was great. And I think that kind of goes into the next point of Harbor Space really does offer the ultimate the ultimate interdisciplinary experience. So you can uh, see that when we talk about the capstone projects and also with NASA, when he describes how he works with different students to really make uh, his capstone come to life. And it's really not even uh, working with different uh, students from the disciplines, but it's also the interdisciplinary experience of also working with different teachers. So even if you're a digital marketing or a high tech entrepreneurship and you really need some design advice, you can always go to the teacher um, that is there for that module to, to get it as well. So it really is an overall interdisciplinary experience with the students, uh, with the faculty even, and also the teachers as the mentors. So now I'm also gonna go into the study abroad options or our exchange programs per se. So our students here can really obtain a double diploma for one of the two universities that we will get into uh, when by completing the required amounts of credits. So we have a collaboration with two schools. Uh, the first one is MIPT, which is the renowned Russian Tech University Moscow Institute for Physics and Technology. So it's really where our technology, our, our technical bachelor students can go there and learn and live in Moscow, Russia to complete their degree there to get a double degree. And then starting in 2019, we had a collaboration with UTCC with the Thai Chamber of Commerce. And it really is uh, the harbor space teaching and the teachers uh, approach used under the ro roof of UTCC. So we're really excited to talk more about uh, our Bangkok campus, at least because uh, it's a really an exciting time because it, uh, it's full of new opportunities and we're officially opening in August. So if you're really interested to get to know more our Bangkok campus, uh, when I send out the presentation later, you can click on the link uh, and um, subscribe for an open day for Bangkok. And we have one every two weeks. Uh, and the next one is actually this Saturday, 10 a.m. CET time, which is the Barcelona Madrid time. So, uh, and now I'm going to hand it over to Chris Duque, one of our admissions officers, to talk more about the scholarships that we have here. Perfect. Thank you, Annie. So, yeah. At Harvard Space, we believe that you know any student, any candidate is more than a resume or some number. So that's why we worked really hard to provide these scholarships to make sure that you know we're giving the opportunity to anyone who believes they belong to Harvard Space to come and to make their dreams a reality. So important to mention, we have the four different types of scholarships. The first one is a merit based scholarship for the students that demonstrate extraordinary academic achievement or leadership potential. This is basically evaluated during the admission process. We also have a woman in tech uh, a scholarship, especially because only 20% of the workforce in the tech industry, only 20% of the workforce in the tech industry is female. So by this, we just wanna play our role as well and, and just to tackle this issue by providing high quality um, um, education to women uh, to pursue a career in technology. Um, also, we have the graduate assistantships for those who want to be or to have more interaction with the teachers and participate more and engage more, not only 
uh, with the teachers, but also with the students, uh, and also the competitive programming for passionate and motivated programmers that want to join our joint and dynamic competitive programming team. So, team. So the most important thing about this is the next slide is that you don't need to do anything different. You only need to complete your application uh, process and you will be automatically considered for one of the scholarships that we offer. Uh, so just one thing to remember, all the scholarships are merit-based, meaning that the amount granted is gonna be based on the expertise and the qualifications of each one of the students. So if you wanna know more, um, the admissions officer will be super, super glad to explain and, and elaborate more on this. Um, yeah, next we have a uh, scholarship success story, something important about this, that we're going to share this information with you, uh, the ones who attend uh, this interview, so that you can read more and learn more about the, the experience of our students, you know, being awarded a scholarship, uh, where they have the possibility to put into practice everything that they get to learn in the classroom in their internship. So we have the successful story uh, of David Petro from Georgia and Jonathan Harrell. Um, they both uh, enroll in one of the programs and the disciplines that we offer, but they were also having the possibility to do an internship with the company. All of this, believing because all of this, because we believe that um, you know you learn by doing, basically. So yeah, if you want to know more about these kind of opportunities, don't forget to submit your application as soon as possible, so that we can also connect you not only with the scholarship opportunities, but also with the industry leaders that are shaping uh, the industry today. Um, next, yeah, so what's next? If you are very excited and you're ready to apply, you only need to register and upload your CV to harbor.space slash register. Remember, only need to upload your CV and, um, and after that, you only need to pay the application fee. You will receive more information as well uh, via email and then you will be ready you know, to join us for an interview. In this interview, we will just basically uh, ask you questions regarding your motivations, your background, your aspirations, and based on that, uh, we will proceed uh, with the next step. So yeah, you're ready. Remember, you only need to register for the application and get ready for the interview. Thank you so much, Chris. So we will go into our Q&A session, and I know we already have uh, two questions. I think either Adriano or, or Chris could take it away with this one. But uh, the first question we have is, how should I prepare myself to be ready for the Catalan language? Will my Spanish be sufficient enough? Um, thank you, Annie. I think I can answer this question. Um, yes, your Spanish should be sufficient. We are in the region of Catalonia, so every local here, it's at least bilingual and speaks Spanish and Catalan. Also, if you're interested in learning Catalan, the government offers free Catalan lessons to everyone willing to learn it. Um, so if you're interested in that, once you're here, you can check it out in the Ayuntamiento page. And it should be something fun you can, you can always take a look at. Um, never forget that Barcelona is also a really international city. So around the city, you will hear a lots of languages, very different languages. And also for everyone who does not speak Spanish, English should work um, to get the basics covered at least, but we still recommend you to try your best and speak a little, a little bit of Spanish for you to conglomerate into the culture of what is Barcelona. Great, thank you, Adriano. So the next question is, what are the prerequisites to apply for a degree in cybersecurity or for front-end development? Yeah, so we consider certificates, transcripts, motivation and recommendation letters, as well as awards, achievements, and extracurricular activities. So for all our technical programs, such as cybersecurity or front-end development, we ask the students to count on a very solid foundational knowledge of mathematics, statistics, and programming. In case that you don't count on this level or that your level is not sufficient, you may join us in our foundation course, Master's Second Language, so that you can ask it yourself and then pursue your career in technology. And for the front-end development, you also need to, uh, because we have some scholarships for front-end development, um, you only need um, to submit a challenge that will be sent after you submit your application. So basically that's it, super simple. Uh, so just don't, don't, don't take too long and think about it and submit your application. <laughs> 
Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Chris. I think we did a wonderful job this virtual open day because there's no more questions. So I think uh, in wrapping it up with this, uh, I would just say, let's keep in touch. So uh, even if you're not ready to make that next step, uh, we can always keep in touch uh, You know, via social media. If you have any more questions for us, you can reach us by phone or by email. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, and that is all.